Today is the appearance day of Lord Nityananda, the eternal associate of Lord Chaitanya. Srila uh, Prabhupada on this occasion always pointed out uh, the mercy, the subject of mercy which Lord Nityananda embodies. Uh, it is an issue which is connected to all uh, religious institutions and religions of the world who always point out the supreme mercy. As a matter of fact, uh, this is not an emotional issue. This is actually a scientific issue to understand that we are all maintained by somebody's mercy. And that means mercy is uh, somebody is doing something for us which uh, we don't know why. We didn't actually deserve it. And very often we didn't even ask for it. So it's given to us. It's called mercy. It's like somebody, you meet somebody on the street and he will say, excuse me, would you please like to have one million kroner? You know, here you can take. You don't know him. Uh, he doesn't know you, seemingly. <coughs> but the mercy was given to you. So Lord Nityananda, uh, is the eternal associates of Lord Chaitanya, who again is Krishna himself, uh, who appears in various forms, but in the same way, uh, through the different ages, always predicted. As Lord Chaitanya is uh, Yuga avatar for this age, for Kali Yuga, uh, appearing not in a very Kali Yuga. Uh, we are very, very fortunate that we are only 500 years behind the periods of Lord Chaitanya, which is extremely rare. Uh, when Lord Chaitanya doesn't appear in Kali Yuga, Kali Yuga is a dark age where everybody is entirely covered by ignorance. Uh, it's an age of quarrel, hypocrisy, and cheating which we can perceive around us all the time. So uh, when Lord Chaitanya appeared, it was no different. Even in India, which is like the summum bonum of uh, holy places, we don't find such a concentration of holy places on this planet as in India, where Krishna in various incarnations appeared again and again and again and again, practically a very inch of the country, India, is practically a, you know, a holy place because everywhere some incarnation of Krishna walked, appeared, performed his pastimes. So Lord Nityananda appeared along with Lord Chaitanya in Bengal, uh, which was already then rega regarded as a pretty impoverished part of India and specifically in that part of India it was very popular uh, that uh, in the name of spirituality all kinds of tantric yogis and all kinds of very very strange individuals presented themselves as spiritual leaders which fits into the age of Kali. So uh, Lord Chaitanya appeared his Patika Pavana that means uh, he specifically likes to save the most fallen ones. And his mercy is man manifold manifested in the personality of Lord Nityananda, who is considered even more merciful as Lord Chaitanya. That means uh, whatever Lord Chaitanya may have reservation to serve or save somebody, Lord Nityananda goes specifically there. He appears in a position of his brother, older brother, 
Uh, he's actually Sankarshan. Sankarshan uh, indicates in his position that he is always protective. He is always protective and facilitating the pastime of Lord Chaitanya. He is the same Lord Chaitanya. It's a God in different features. God doesn't have to uh, be only one person with different features. His features take personalities on their own. Uh, in a material world, you would call it schizophrenia. <laughs> in a spiritual world, it's ecstasy. <laughs> he had people also, we have people walking around who are like, have the different features and they unpredictably switch from one to another. <laughs> and then it goes, oh yeah, he's schizophrenic. <laughs> this is the perverted reflection of God's manifold nature, which takes form ever in of one is of his numberless features has a personality to it. And that personality acts a part of God, of his nature. This is completely unknown in a Western tradition. Because the personality of God is defined in a very simple terms. His Father in heaven, uh, he is the oldest, that means he must be very old. And he is most powerful, yes, we know that, because he can punish us. Power is connected to punishment immediately. In other words, an old, a really angry man who can give us a lot of hard time. Amazingly, Paul Edward was preached love to the Father. How can you love somebody who appears in the description of the church more like an old, very angry policeman? It's not exactly facilitating that kind of love, you know. Nobody likes old, angry policemen. So in the uh, Vaishnava tradition, we find an entirely different description of God in his various features. And in his feature, appearing in Kali Yuga, along with Lord Chaitanya, like Lord Nityananda, and things get very interesting and uh, very exciting. Because Lord Nityananda is representing an aspect of Krishna. He's not only the most merciful, but also the most dynamic. Uh, he is, uh, you could call it, in the material world they call it extroverted. Uh, <coughs> he is the most extroverted feature of God, always eager to go out and save the conditioned souls. Which is the mood of Lord Chaitanya. This is the Sankirtan movement, he's going out. and congregationally chanting the holy name, reclaiming the conditioned soul from the lap of Maya. In this, this uh, way, Lord Nityananda plays a very important role. He is really showing how to do that, unconditionally. The Avarais associates of Lord Chaitanya who appeared with him. And Lord Nityananda is also called Abadhuta. He already cannot be defined in the terms of some Varna or Ashrama, that means some social order, or uh, uh, like he doesn't walk in Sanya's dress. He has a very colorful dhoti, you know. He is, he is uh, in his behavior, very outgoing, very dynamic. And uh, <laughs> it's like described that when he was going out preaching in uh, uh, Navadvip, Rabbi Chaitanya, here in Mayapur, uh, Lord Nityananda was so eccentric in his preaching methods and so dynamic that there were actually not many who actually really wanted to join him, even from the associates of Lord Chaitanya. Specifically, as described when he was going on with Haridas Thakur, who is uh, actually an incarnation of Lord Brahma. Brahma means uh, actually a very, you know, he is the architect of this universe, a very uh, you know, you could say he is the ultimate intellectual in this universe. He has four heads. He designed the whole universe. So as Haidas Thakur, uh, Brahma appearing as Haidas Thakur is an Amacharya, specifically dedicated to the intense chanting of the Holy Name. So, but Haidas Thakur in his, uh, you know, appearance, he was an elderly man, very sober and very intense, absorbed in chanting of the Holy Name. And of course he was part of the preaching too, but not like Lord Nityananda. So then they were actually assigned by Lord Chaitanya to go together to preach. 
uh, Heiner Strako had some uh, reservations if he could really go with this Nityananda <laughs> because this Nityananda was spreading the Holy Name in such an outgoing, ecstatic way, uh, jumping basically on people and praising them and uh, you know, and infecting them with love of God and so instantly. So, Aina Stanko was always more sober, more in his presentation. And of course, it didn't took long. The first thing Bonikanda said, let's go to the lowest part of Navadvip, where the most formed ones are living. And Aina Stanko was going, do we have to go there? I guess every city in Copenhagen has a different parts. And there's a part when you go, you will probably find very specific people who certainly smell very strongly after hashish and uh, also behave in a certain way. I heard even there's a street in Copenhagen where you can be sure that that's where the criminals are living. Such a street did also exist in Navadvip, what part of the city. And there, be representing Patita Mahana, the savior of the most fallen. Lord Nityananda was immediately heading for that part, actually uh, receiving quite harsh response. Finally, I put it in the personalities of Jagai and Madai, who were actually fallen Brahmanas, who uh, became drunkards, and uh, you know, and ultimately, Lord Nityananda was attacked by them. So uh, uh, there was always some very, very. Uh, extreme situations around Lord Nityananda, who were, of course, ecstatic, loaded with preaching spirit. Lord Nityananda is always in the mood of preaching so much that sometimes it was seen that he actually jumped in the Ganges in his ecstasy of preaching. And those days, it's reported there were even crocodiles swimming around still in Ganges because it was partially flowing through a uh, jungle. And it is described that Lord Nityananda sometimes was just embracing the crocodiles and Genji, slapping them, inducing them to chant Hare Krishna too. Or simply floating down the river, the Genji is like a dead corpse. They have dead corpses floating in India, you know, in the river. And he was floating down like a dead corpse and chanting very loudly the holy name. That kind of behavior, of course, we don't have. Shri Prabhupada didn't manifest this kind of attitude, neither he was teaching us to spread Krishna consciousness in this way, because people will simply think we are crazy. So, uh, uh, Lord Nityananda, to go in detail, seems to be very, very extravagant and very eccentric, but actually what we can really today remember is that uh, we wouldn't sit here without the mercy of Lord Nityananda, we wouldn't sit here without the mercy of his representatives. Uh, because the covering, especially in Kaliuka, is so thick that Krishna consciousness will appear to us either in a perverted form or it wouldn't appeal to us at all. As we can see daily on the street, there are people who perceive Krishna consciousness as something entirely strange, foreign, uh, uh, very unpleasant even, because it doesn't appear to them whatsoever. It doesn't touch the heart, you know. They just think, this is the Hare Krishna. And this is us. And here we are. Like, wherever you go on this planet, whatever location you go to, you feel, you know, immediately the conditioning of the local residents, who are totally convinced that the place of the birth is my home. And the sound of the language I speak is the ultimate sound, most beautiful one, actually. Even some languages really sound like frogs are conversing. You know, from another point of view, when you hear another language, like, you know, like, if I would hear Chinese, for me sounds like a very, you know, ching chong chong. That's it. I don't understand anything, and just the sound is very strange to me. But the Chinese, hearing Danish probably, he thinks, what is this? You know, for him that sound is very strange. So we are so conditioned by the environment, so locked up in our bodies, that we are always thinking, oh, that's me. I'm the body and that environment, that's my home, and this is the culture I come from, and this is the environment. Where are you coming from? 
Oh, I am from this part of the world. Very good. I'm also from. Can we immediately identify each other like this? So uh, this is conditioning. To break out of that conditioning and perceive Krishna consciousness in a real sense as appealing to me is actually incredibly revolutionary. The Prabhupada enjoyed it when his disciples were addressed in America, I know, uh, by Christian priests even, asking them, are you American? You know, are you? Because they couldn't imagine how these people, who were just not long time ago, appearing like Americans, suddenly start to look like this. I just read the testimony of my good brother, Satsvarup Maharaj, who still was working, you know, he was one of the first devotees in this movement, and he was working in a social welfare office, and, and one day he appeared in his office, just shaved with hairs like this, and with tilak, and, and he sat on his table, and, you know, fortunately there was another devotee who at the same time also got a job in another office. Well, the boss came into his office and said, what have you done? How do you look like? You don't have a social welfare workers here looking like this. And he said, no, they are now everywhere. Here's a phone number, you can call the other company. They have another one too, they, you know? <laughs> so he called the boss from the other company, he said, are they now everywhere? You have one too? And he said, yeah, I have one too also. No, here, just a funny thing at the end, and he has something painted in his face. And he just sitting in his job here, you know? And that's how Krishna consciousness starts to spread. That's how foreign and strange Krishna consciousness looks for us. I remember, I mean, we all remember we joined here from a very conditioned background. How strange it was to meet a devotee. Exciting, nevertheless, but a completely strange experience. Now, considering that we are all part of God and part of Krishna, you know, uh, there were the word sect is used always. They are members of a sect. I, I grew up with this, I grew up in, I joined in Germany. That was very popular, the sect. Sect was classified, the word sect was immediately classified like terrorist or something very, a group which can be even dangerous. Immediately, they, they was immediately identified with danger, sect. Actually, technically spoken, that word sect, it can be found in a word insect. Something very, very small. But actually, from Krishna's point of view, everybody living in this material world is a member of some sect, looking like an insect. In comparison to the spiritual reality and to the actually spiritual real we all come from, this material world is just a little, little speck of dust somewhere in the corner. The vast, the predominant feature of God's creation is the spiritual world. So it is only by mercy that actually discovering can be torn away and we start to actually suddenly uh, sympathize with Krishna consciousness. Suddenly it appears to us attractive, even strange but attractive. And then suddenly we more and more realize, yeah, actually that's me. That's actually myself. Outside of that, I was just playing kind of roles. Hello, good morning, how are you, what's your name? My name can be changed. What's your nationality? That can be changed too. What's your occupation? Well, the occupation nowadays, they change occupation faster as they, they, they are changed for them. You don't even ask how to change your occupation, it will be changed for you. You will lose your job. Wherever I travel nowadays, I see only people just looking for a job and wondering what happened. And yesterday he had two million dollars and today he has two dollars. and. You know, and he doesn't know what happened, and there's confusion everywhere. There's no stability anymore. There's stability nowhere to be found. Not in business, not in politics, not in uh, <clears throat> type of thinking. Confusion everywhere. So this is uh, becoming very intensified now. Which is good for Krishna consciousness, because people may raise the simple question, well, who is me anyway? Yesterday I was this. Now this was taken away from me, you know, I was a even father, yeah, well, you know, okay, so I'm still a father, but where's my daughter, yeah, well, hey, it's gone, you know, I was husband, where's my wife, well, daughter gone, well, well, what happened, 
Oh, where's, uh, I was a wife. Where's my husband? Oh, they're all gone. You know, these things are taken out of people's lives as Kali Yuga progresses in a faster and faster speed, leaving us with one simple question. Who are we really? What is there which we can say that's me? What is there which actually I can relate to? Because everything is in a constant movement. So there Krishna consciousness suddenly becomes relevant. Suddenly people start to ask, Hey, are you were Hare Krishna, you know, before, and you are now, and, and uh, that's interesting, and what is this? When they hear about the eternity of the soul, which is never changing, which is always me, it's always us, the souls, part and parcel of Krishna, then suddenly some peace arrives, and some stability arrives. Stability can be found only in Krishna consciousness. And that understanding comes by the mercy, which is, actually Prabhupada said, nobody of you invited me here. I came to America, he had an official invitation by an Indian family, just to get some entrance into the country. But that family, of course, never expected him to stay with them and live with them forever like that. So he just came. He just came. And uh, he found himself in a completely strange environment. Nevertheless, Prabhupada said, I never felt alone. Because Krishna was here, it's part of Krishna's creation. The world is never surprised. What is this? What are they doing here? Because he understands, this is all Krishna's creation. And according to the modes of nature, in a particle areas, people do particular things. So what? We are just the visitors here. And it's like visiting a theater, you know, before the curtain goes open. You don't know really how the piece is going to look like, but you know it's a theater. They play here, that's actors. They have not their, this is not their identities, it's just a play. So the curtain goes up, you know, and they go, oh, I love you, and I hate you, and I kill you, and, uh, and then people laugh, and people cry, and... And then, uh, then it accelerates a big drama, and at the end, all the actors, even the dead ones, you know, they come in front of the curtain and they bow down and thank the audience, and then they go home again. This is how a devotee perceives this world. You know, they are all moaning and hoping and 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 you know, and even praying, pious, but they don't even know to whom. They're just praying something. Like in India, so many people are praying. To what? You ask them, what are you praying for? Actually, you don't know to whom you are praying, and you don't know what you are praying for. Because people connect that word mercy, they connect it immediately to something material. Mercy means, yes, be please merciful and facilitate my material desires. This is called religion, <coughs> materialist book. Therefore, Prabhupada calls such a people religionists. It's, it's like, uh, you know, uh, uh, medicinists and musicians, and everybody's a profession. So it's more kind of professional way to do that. It's pious. There's an understanding of there's a supreme being, or something supreme, but there is no concept. And the motivation is always material. Give me, give me, give me this, give me that, give me that, fulfill my desire. Be merciful, please. Give me. Well, that's not the mercy which is coming from Lord Chaitanya. Because Lord Chaitanya is not fulfilling material desires. Therefore, you find his worship is not so popular. You know, in India, he's actually quite unknown. The whole South India, pff, they don't know much about it. In India, there are not many people who know about Lord Chaitanya, really. Because he is not really suitable to fulfill the material desires. He is giving only one thing. Love of God. You love God. Yeah, I love him. If he gives me something, of course, he has to give me something. I love you. This is material love. Material life means always expectation. Give me and then I will love you. If you don't give, no, 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 I will not love you. You know, this is on all levels can be found. Everybody has expectations. Therefore, at that point, Krishna consciousness appear like not relevant. What do I get out of it? You know, what do I really get out of this chanting? What did I do out of it to come and glorify Lord Nityananda? 
You know, he may do his ecstasies, but when do I get out of it? You know, what? what? And this, when we study the scriptures and we study actually the examples of advanced devotees, we understand that love of God it is all inclusive. Of course, Krishna will not reward us materially uh, for one simple reason. Not because he couldn't, of course he can, but he will spoil us. And he knows that lingering desire in the heart. This, as soon as I feel better, and as I get some money, eh, then I will enjoy it here. I will not go back home, back to Ghana. No, 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 no. I will arrange it here. Nicely, maybe even piously, but here. No, the message transferred is not here, out of here. This is a Vairagya movement, this means out. Leave this. This is not the place you belong to. This is not your home. This is called Prabhupada. I was in one morning walk with Shila Prabhupada. And Shila Prabhupada was known that, that you don't find in people of his age, you know. <laughs> when you find a, a 70 years old man walking on the street, you know, you, mostly you see him almost bumping into things. He's so covered that he just bumps always into something or, or you know, or, you know, he just barely operates the mechanics of his body. Well, that was not Shila Prabhupada. <laughs> Shri Prabhupada was so alert and so conscious about details about around him. That's called Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness doesn't mean that you close the shutters down and you become more and more focused. So focused that you become almost like this, uh, you know, see, they call it mulvat. You know, these creatures who dig themselves down and they're very focused. You know, they never come up. Some, some people can perceive Krishna consciousness like this, you know. He is so focused on the holy name, he doesn't see anything anymore, he doesn't feel anything anymore, he is just trying to... You know? Very wrong conception. It's completely contradicting the effects of the holy name, because the holy name, when you chant, makes you more and more aware. So aware that sometimes people stop chanting, because they are scared what they get to see. You know, they go, oh, first of all, you become aware of your conditioning because you take distance from your body. And you realize, my God, you know, I have nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> the next realization, oh, I'm stupid. <laughs> you know, oh no, you know, I'm fallen. Look at the desire coming out of my heart. You know, it's. It's uh, uh, I'm an aborigine, you know. I just thought how to eat him, you know. Yeah, I'm cannibal. I'm, you know. Uh, we don't tell this to people. We tell them, "Chant Hare Krishna and be happy." <laughs> it's happiness, isn't it? It is, of course, because me, the soul, rejoices. I'm chanting Hare Krishna. I'm part of Krishna. But along with that comes this realization. Uh, yeah, as a spiritual soul, where did I end up with this? <laughs> so Shri Prabhupada was so aware, I remember that morning walk, we walked on a field between, the, it was just a grain growing and there was a, there was a road on the field. And there was lots of rain days before and the rain was uh, filling the holes in the field and there was actually a mouse which got drowned and got, you know, washed out from the field, it was lying a dead mouse on the road. Normally a small mouse, nobody wouldn't notice even. Robot stopped. And then we all flocked around him and he pointed with a stick to the mouse, he said, what is this? We were all staring at the dead mouse, you know, and we were trying to find some philosophical explanation, but nobody actually could say anything. Prabhupada looked very serious and said, Mrituloka, place of death. Means everybody can die any minute. And he kept on walking. So, you know, so uh, when you chant Hare Krishna, the world becomes very.